Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. It's the World Series. It's Yankees Dodgers. We're gonna de- deep dive, dive deep. Let's play ball. Let's talk ball. Yamamoto. Bunting. Ah, uh, yes. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Presented to you by SeatGeek. My name is Jake Storielli. That is Trevor Plouffe, former Major League Baseball player, producing his big baby David. It's the World Series. It's the big one. It's Yankees, Dodgers. It's Shohei and Judge. Five MVPs on the field, the two home run leaders, the two biggest cities. Japan's in on this. Um, this is uh, This is the one that... Everyone has kind of daydreamed about. Uh, what if? L.A., New York, blah, blah, blah. Not everyone, man. I want my Reds in there. Let's get them back one day. But for now, uh, we've got the big one, Trev. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Jakey boy. Uh, I agree with you. I mean, look, we, we kind of talked about this uh, over the last couple of episodes and just the the feeling of it. Um it, this is a blockbuster. I mean, that's really no other way to put it. And yeah, some people don't like blockbusters. They want their indie flicks, nice. which is fine. There yeah. are some indie flicks that I dig. Right. What's, what's the one? Oh man, now I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna lose. It. I'm gonna get it back. Um. Okay. Gosh, I wish I had it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, it 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 is a blockbuster. It feels heavy. There are a ton of like iconic storylines. But what I what I think what I think I like about it the best, Jake, is we're gonna see, I don't know, five or six of the best players in baseball yes. like facing off against each other. And and I might be selling that light. It might be even more than that. I mean, we're talking about, like you said, two MVPs, um, like an argument for who had the best year this year is like kind of at stake and it's there's just a lot of those storylines that I think are going like I I said last episode transcend baseball fans and kind of creep into almost like pop culture like that's what I feel like this world series will do so whether you like it or not uh, which honestly I I don't know how you can't like it I get like you might hate both these teams but in the end it is just a it's going to be a a good old slug fest with two fan bases that are going to like find this hate for each other. I don't think Yankees and Dodgers fans have hate for each other. Like normally because you don't see each other that often, but like they're going to find it. Pop, yes. During this series. I, yes. Like I, I, you know, I, I've had a couple head tilt moments early on. Cause I, I was getting some Dodgers crap and then I was like, okay, diamondbacks. And then they're like, dude, you did Padres and Mets live streams. I was like, okay, I, that does make a lot of sense. Um, but I was like, yeah, Yankees and Dodgers. Cause everyone, you know, this is the most played world series. They haven't played since 81. I, th- I think I saw one of the stats on our sheet today is like <laughs> that they've, they've played, they've only played four world series since the Dodgers moved to LA. So I was like, okay, like, you know what? My, my Brooklyn Dodgers, I, I haven't kept track of too close. Like shout out to them signing Jackie. That was huge. Outside of that, like my Brooklyn Dodgers knowledge isn't great, um, and I we're it's not. The, it's the most it's the most common matchup in World Series history. Ten percent of times, like yeah, that was like literally in the nineteen thirties and forties. Literally Guys, every one of those matchups like, predates like my America. life. Um, um predates Garden life. State was the movie. Oh, nice, Zach Braff. Sure. Um, yeah, this is like an indie flick that I enjoy. Yeah, this is an indie. This is just kind of like bad mid comedy. But go watch Saving Silverman. It's my favorite movie. Okay. I've, I've turned it on late night a couple times. I laugh out loud audibly throughout the movie. Uh, no free ads. Uh, Trev, this one's not. It's from SeatGeek. Uh, make sure you guys, if you're going to this game, here's a little tidbit. <laughs> uh, the tickets are, are living up to the billing. Uh, so you're going to need whatever you can find. And SeatGeek has given you a code John boy playoffs, 10, uh, 10% off, whether you're a first time buyer or not. Uh, not only are the playoffs here, we're down to the last one, uh, New York and LA, um, John boy playoffs, 10, 
They are giving you the hookup this postseason. Uh, use the code. Go to SeatGeek. Uh, and if you're not, and you're maybe you're looking for one of those indie things, and you're like, you know, I, this series, whatever, man, I'm going to go. Uh, this band's playing around the corner. You can use the same SeatGeek code. John Boy Playoffs 10. So what are you doing? Uh, saves you 10%. Uh, thank you to SeatGeek. Uh, Trev will lay it out for the people a little bit. You know, we're going to start wide and aim small at the end. Like, we're... We're going to tee this up for the people. We probably have uh, some new listeners coming in for this big one. So, hey, welcome to have you. And uh, if you guys want to subscribe and all that stuff, everything helps. That's kind of not our bag asking for that, which is a mistake because whenever we do ask, people do subscribe. So uh, we appreciate all that. And uh, buckle up for some deep dive baseball stuff, some weird jokes and uh, everything else. But... Uh, at the start, Trev, I got something I like. Okay. Every game is at 8.08 Eastern time, five, 5.08 Pacific. Boom. Why do you like that? Uh, it's just easy. Like, it's just okay, one less thing. You know thing. when every game is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm 8 o'clock every night. I'll, I'll be watching ball. Uh, 5 o'clock on the West Coast. Uh, so yeah, again, pretty basic. We're starting off in LA. They have home field advantage. That should be stated two, if you don't know. Two, three, two. That's the yep. games. Um, we're getting games Friday, which is, uh, October 25th, yep. Saturday, October 26th. Then we'll have an off day before we head to New York. I think it's important to, uh, let the people know when the games are, Jake. Nice, Trev. And the off days are nice actually day. extremely important with the version of baseball we play in 2024 and how much both of these teams rely on their A bullpens. Um, and that's probably going to play into some of the strategy, especially early on in this series, um, with the layoff coming into game one, and then that first off day um, on Sunday. Uh, these two teams played once this year. Uh, the Dodgers took two out of three in New York. Uh, the first game went to 11 innings. Teoscar with the big two-run double to open it up. It was 0-0. Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Seven innings shutout. Could be important. Um, Dodgers blew him out in the second game. It was actually close uh, into the eighth when Teoscar Hernandez hit a grand slam. That, that really opened it up. Uh, and then the Yankees ended up taking that final game. Uh, behind a big Trent Grisham home run, who, not sure if he's going to make the roster. We'll get into that probably later. And I believe the, chan the, the bleachers were chanting, we want Soto, right before Trent Grisham homer. Oh, my God. That was that game? Yep. Uh, because Juan Soto did miss this series. So, uh, you know, in baseball, we can take so much. And we do have a – there's a lot of interesting batter versus pitcher history that – I want to dive into later. Um, Max Muncy was not a part of this series. Juan Soto was not a part of this series. Garrett Cole was not a part of this series. Um, and then that also was before the trade deadline. So uh, Dodgers game one starter and me and Trev's mutual friend, Jack Flaherty, will get the pill in game one. Um, Tommy Edmond, who just won the NLCS MVP, and Michael Kopech, who could start or close games for the Dodgers, is added in Jazz Chisholm, uh, your new New York Yankees starting third baseman. So, uh, Trev, any, I guess, do you want anything there, or do we keep going into some of these storylines? I think that's important to note. I mean, yeah, this, these are two completely different rosters, uh, even, I mean, the roster construction is different. Who is healthy is different. I mean, I think maybe we go there, the health of some players. You kind of look over the rosters. Uh, Freddie Freeman's an interesting one for yeah. the Dodgers. Uh, everyone knows this guy is, you know, he's part of the the big three, if you will. Shohei, Mookie, and then Freddie. He's been banged up, dealing with the foot issue. Uh, he had some time to heal up. I I think he's saying he's feeling really good but i think if we're looking at something to keep an eye on on the dodger side as far as health i think you're looking at freddie freeman if he's going to be a guy that's kind of limited to 
you know, a 70% capacity and not really feeling good. Or if those extra days actually got him back to where he's feeling completely healthy, because that totally changes the dynamic of that Dodgers lineup. It changes, you know, kind of what they do uh, with their lineup in late in games. Um, so I think that's something that I'll definitely be checking out. Like first at bat, how's Freddie looking? Right. He's got, he's on the roster. Is he, how is he running? Is he going to take it easy? All these little things matter in, I mean, this is this is the World Series. You talk about things getting magnified in the postseason. Well, shoot, this is where we are checking every little detail out. And I think that's kind of where I'd start um, with the Dodgers. And for the Yankees, I know on your guys' side, it's it's kind of like a Nestor Cortez. Like, what what's he going to offer? He's had some really funny quotes. Bees, what, what's the final quote there? We've waited in the consequences, but if I have a ring and then a year off of baseball, then so be it. <laughs> the guys are literally trying to, they want the ring so bad, they're willing to sacrifice a year of of play to get it, which is awesome. Yeah, that's 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 one of those quotes that can be really cool in two weeks or really bad in a week. Uh, we'll, we'll see with Nestor. Yeah, we, we got a lot of banged up guys and injured guys. Um on both sides, Gavin Lux, Vessia. Um, I, I want to circle back on that in a minute because I, I want to get a couple of these big ones out of the way before before we lose them. Uh, you like, talking storylines, Pop? Storylines. Oh, oh. story alley lines. Story alley lines, if you will. And I want to get this out there as long if there are some new listeners. Um, I am a Yankees fan, and if you have no idea what we're oh, about, sheesh. like I... There's a Derek Jeter poster behind me. So if there's something that feels Yankees biased or I'm saying I'm Yankees biased, it's because I am. I, I want the Yankees to win. Um, and uh, Dodgers fans, I'm, I'm sorry if, if you feel there's, there's parts that I'm not interpreting properly, but I'm excited Don't to see worry, your Don't worry, I'm from Trends L.A. Got I got it. Did I do it right? Um, fourth time in the wild card era, 1995, that the one seeds will link up. Uh, first since 2013, Red Sox Cardinals, uh, the 99 Yankees Braves series, and the 95 formerly Cleveland Indians and the Braves. Uh, the 12th time the Yankees and the Dodgers have linked up, but again, that's a little <laughs> slightly fugazi. Uh, the series is at two and two since the Dodgers moved to LA. Uh, so the Yankees used to really give it to Brooklyn back in the day. Um, we're not going to dive into that. And the first time in MLB history that five former MVPs will be on the field. Giancarlo Stanton, Aaron Judge, uh, Shohei Otani, Mookie Betts, and Freddie Freeman. Uh, Clayton Kershaw unlisted because he's on the IL for this. He's got an MVP in the bag. And dude, there's like, there's another and tier. And Juan Soto should probably win a yeah, MVP like, at some point. Juan Soto's going to have one at one point. I'll, I'll, I'll sign off on that. Or maybe um, maybe not. And like, dude, DJ LeMay he goes to the NL. DJ LeMayhew on the aisle for the Yankees. I I know Yankee fans might be rolling their eyes right now, but he finished second, um, or or third a couple years ago. Uh, DJ LeMayhew finished third in the MVP. I think he had a back to back third and fourth. Like, again, unli- unlisted in this matchup for injuries and whatever. But you know the the next tier of guys are still. Insane in this series. You got the top home run hitters. Aaron Judge, larger than life, New York City. Shohei Otani, larger than life, <laughs> LA, Japan. Uh, he can pitch, by the way. That's a whole nother topic. Uh, but the sixth time in World Series history that the home run leaders have linked up. And the first time since 1956. So again, this is part of the reason we're treating this as... Uh, not uncharted waters, but it, part of the reason there's so much excitement by this. The last time was Mickey Mantle and Duke Schneider. So uh, we've got the fellas in this one. Not as big of a note, Juan Soto's 26th birthday on Friday, game that one. That is a big note. That's it nice. It is a big note. It is a big note because I'm telling people, not real gambling advice, but if you want to sprinkle, I sprinkle on a Juan Soto homer. I am just saying sometimes a simulation – it has some cracks in it, and you can see through it, and that seems like one of these instances, Jake. Trev, for the people that have been with us for the past um, couple years, you know my my baseball analytics binder has evolved to I'm all I'm all about hitting. Uh, it it showed up last postseason in a big way. 
Um, and I think it's shown up this postseason with the Dodgers and the Yankees both being the teams um, that have hit the most home runs during the regular season and have drawn the most walks. Um, Can I give you some some pl- uh, comparisons here? Please. On the season, the Yankees were first in home runs in, in baseball. The Dodgers were third. Yankees third in o- OBP, OPS, and run scored. Dodgers second in OBP, first in OPS, and second in run scored. You know who was first in a lot of these categories? I think it was the Diamondbacks. Snakes, which snakes hit this year. Crazy. And they missed the playoffs uh, because of a last day doubleheader with the Braves and the Mets. Yeah, so these are two of the best offenses in all of baseball. My gosh, the Snakes' rankings are crazy. Just to go back, we're talking about the Arizona Diamondbacks, people who missed the playoffs, Mm -hmm. first in OEP, second in OPS, first in runs, also fifth in home runs. Yeah. So RIP Snakes. But uh, we're we're talking about two very, very good offenses. You mentioned how these these teams have got here. Um, It's been... Dodgers for sure with the crooked number, being able to put up more than one run an inning and kind of just putting teams to sleep with that. Two run innings, four run innings. The big inning has been a big reason why the Dodgers have been able to advance to the World Series. And if you look at the Yankees, I'd say it's it's about the same. I mean, you're getting big time homers from your big time players. Um, so if if you're into like pitchers duels, I don't know if you're going to get that here. I really don't know if you're going to get that. I kind of want one and I want a couple of these guys to step up, but I think this is going to be whose offense can get the hit with runners in scoring position. And then what bullpen holds up the best. That's kind of the first takeaways that I have when I'm looking at this series. Yeah. It's lineup wise. It feels like the Dodgers have a little more depth. Um, and the Yankees have a little more meat because Giancarlo Stanton now in 36 playoff games has a 677 slugging and a one dot OPS. So, you know, Giancarlo Stanton, there was a while when you were listing most feared hitters in the league and like just best players in general, he was that guy. He won an MVP. That has faded between injuries and kind of the stats coming down a little bit. In the postseason and just winning the ALCS MVP, I mean, he... That the the proof is in the pudding. Is that a phrase? Mm. Is that a cooking phrase that we've just used as when something's good? The proof is in the pudding. What is that? Yeah, I like it. I don't know why people say that. That's people crazy. say that, and that's I'll Google it. Um so I guess again, before getting kind of further into the matchups, a lot of people are kind of saying that it is what <laughs> on the other side of the hitting, it's what pitching can hold up. And that's where yeah. it becomes an interesting, like, I think, again, the Yankees' meat of the bullpen is feels stronger, where the Dodgers may have a little more depth. No, you don't agree with I, that. I am, I am giving this bullpen, like, if I'm ranking different sections of the teams, I think the Dodgers by far have a better bullpen okay. than the New York Yankees. I do. I do. You guys I was kind of agreeing. Out. Yeah, I mean, Weaver has done a really good job. I think, you know, he is yeah. an upper echelon reliever in the game right now. He's established himself, and that's crazy to me. I mean, it's nuts. We don't need to get, we don't need to get into that nuts. too much, but just go look at his baseball reference page and where he's been and where he's at now. Um, Clay Holmes has been shaky. Um, he has the potential to, you know, be a lockdown guy. We've okay. seen that. We've also seen him leave that sinker up a lot. And then... Uh, Tommy Canley, you know, change ups to the max. I think you can count on him. Um, I think what the Dodgers have out there is just a little bit more depth. Uh, I think how many, how many high leverage guys would you say the Yankees have right now? Guys you would trust in mm. high leverage situations. I guess you're probably going to add Tim Hill in that equation. Tim Hill has deserved fence. that to be said. Uh, Tim Hill has okay. been great for the Yankees. Uh, in the Guardians, he was massive because they were rolling out like a whole lineup of lefties. And with the Yankees, he was fantastic this year. It's just uh, the hesitation in anyone's voice. If you don't know, Tim Hill, I think he has the lowest release point this year. He's a submarine lefty who throws 87. He basically throws <laughs> two different fastballs every pitch, a sinker and a four-seamer. 
And, uh, yeah, man, he, he's going to be highlighted in this series because the Yankees will need him to attack Shohei Otani. So, and he, he deserves credit. He has been really good. So I, I think the Yankees, to question marks, Jake Cousins was really good for them down the stretch, um, and they believe in him versus righties. Uh, so he will draw some of the tough matchups from that side of the plate. Um, and then, yeah, you're you're going to see every person in every bullpen because yeah. that's modern baseball. Boone's going to try to get the matchups he wants. I'm not ready to put Mark, Mark Letter Jr. in a high leverage situation just yet. I know he, he, I know he did, did it in the but ALCS, yes. but I don't know if that's something that you'd want against these Dodgers. I, hey, prove me wrong, man. It's not the right. sure. script. Right. Yeah. Um, so I would I would lean Dodgers there. Um, they're uh, the only thing you could say is well they're gonna have to throw a bullpen game, right? And that could you know the overexposure, the extra pitches they're gonna have to throw. Maybe that'll lessen their their firepower. But if I'm just looking straight up at who they have and the guys they can bring in to put fires out, I'm going Dodgers there. Whereas the starting pitching, I think you definitely have to lean. With the New York Yankees. Yeah, the the starting pitching is kind of the story as of now. Um let's let's go with Mountain Dew. Um <laughs> the starting pitching kind of needs to get mm. off their ass and do yeah, it. Yeah, get off their ass. Yeah. Do it. Do you get it? Uh bold flavors and a refreshing citrus kick. Mountain Dew will get you off your ass and have you feeling like you're on top of a mountain. Man, one of these teams is gonna be feeling like they're on top of a mountain Hold on. in about ten days. Yeah. Did they name it Mountain Dew mm. because of like the dew, like the, the moisture that would be on like, some grass on the mountain, or like Mountain Dew it? BBD, if you can Google why they named Mountain Dew Mountain Dew, um, <laughs> you know you you guys know Mountain Dew. We're finding out why they were named what they were, but you guys know it, uh, and you might know it from like video games, staying up late, giving that like boost. Uh, you can have that while you're. Know what one of Trev's favorite thing is? Tossing the football around. No joke. Oh, so it lights much. up like a Christmas tree. Um, the mountain is calling. You should answer. Grab your friends. Grab an ice cold Mountain Dew wherever refreshing beverages are sold and do the do. Any Mountain Dew name update? We'll circle back on it. According to the Wikipedia, Mountain Dew was originally Southern and or Scots Irish slang uh, for moonshine. Um, as referenced in oh. the Irish folk song, the rare old Mountain Dew dating from 1882. Using it as, an, uh, using it as the name for the soda was originally suggested by Carl E. Retzky at uh, Owens, Illinois. <laughs> I mean, okay. Kind of love that, to be honest with you. It's That's like not either of the things wild. I suggested. Curveball. Pretty wild. And speaking of curveballs, uh, Trev. Let's do the Dodgers starting pitch. Because, you know, we okay. we glazed the Yanks pen there a little bit. Um, Dodgers, Trinan, Kopech, Phillips, Hudson, Banda, Britt. Like, I, I do think their depth is currently better down there. And Trinan as, yeah. Trinan as the bad man, my God. He is, he is out of a movie, bro. With his goatee and his eyes and his slider, it's... It kind of feels like an early 2000s reliever. I love it, dude. It's does that make sense? Babes, if you can maybe get the video of him striking out Vientos, um, because it and then walking is it did he walk off the mound? Was that to end the inning? His eyes. It's like a husky dog came to life in these pitches. eyes. <laughs> these eyes have seen a lot of love, but they're never gonna see it. <laughs> um Trev, our guy Jack Flaherty gets the start in game one. Um, yes. He had an incredible bounce back season. Um, you've known him since he's been a, a boy and has become a man. Uh, he did our first live show ever with us. Uh, yeah. I, in LA. Know, was I partying with him in Tulum this offseason? I mean, yeah. Um, oh, God. That whole inning. I mean, podcast only. We're showing Blake trying in. Highlights right here, and it is <laughs> Pete Alonzo swinging at balls in different. That's a little area Eric Gagne ish with that goatee. Yeah. That thing, that's that's like a chin strap. That's not. It's, it's like a goat. dot. Um, Jack Flaherty. They traded for him at the deadline, which the Yankees were in on trading for Jack Flaherty at the deadline. So that's one of the other storylines going on here. 
Um, and Jack Flaherty had a great seven-inning shutout start. Jack Flaherty's last start, no bueno. Got rocked around. Uh, stuff was kind of down. Uh, that it's going to be him and Yamamoto game one, games one and two. And the last two teams connected to both of these guys is the New York Yankees. Um, that I, I guess for both of them, where are you at, Trev? Well, I mean, look, Jack has, I think, a lot of pressure on him, for being honest here. He's had three postseason starts this year, and two have gone poorly, and one has gone well. And, you know, I, I think for him, especially against this Yankee team, it's it's kind of when to challenge, when to back away, uh, how good is your location. He doesn't have, like, super overpowering stuff. That's not the kind of pitcher that he is. So he's going to have to, you know, throw that slider, you know, when he's behind the count and locate it well. He's going to have to really pinpoint that fastball. We did see his stuff tick down a little bit in his last start, but now he's got some days off and some rest. I, I believe we'll see a full strength uh, Jack Flaherty. He did, or well, he's only pitched one time against the Yankees. When was that? Was that this year? No, it was. No starts against the Yankees this year. Um, so you can't really go on that. He's got some matchups that are interesting. Anthony Rizzo hits him pretty well. Uh, nine for 21. Juan Soto, he's been careful with. Uh, one for nine against Juan Soto. He has walked him five times. Hasn't really been a big strikeout guy. He's had games where he can, um, you know, strike people out. But I don't think that's what I would classify him as. I think mm. he's... I think he's a pitcher that really needs to locate his stuff. So that's the big key for Jack is, is he getting ahead of hitters? And then is he, and when I talk about location and command, it's can he present that slider in the zone and then let it work out of the zone? I think that's kind of key. There are times where he'll throw it too much for a strike and it's hittable. And there are times where he'll throw it where it's a ball out of his hand and you know, that's not going to do anything for him. So he really has to be pinpoint with his location. And then I think it's, I'm very curious to say, to see how he approaches this lineup. I mean, who's he, you can't just go at these guys. Like there are going to be ha times where you have to pitch around, whether it's Soto, whether it's judge, whether it's Stanton, you just got to pick the times. I think that's going to be, you know, between him and Will Smith deciding when to be aggressive, when to kind of pull back. You know, we, we saw, Stephen Vogt pitched to Giancarlo Stanton a few times where he probably shouldn't have. And I don't think the Dodgers are going to make that mistake. I, I just don't think they are. So I think throughout, not just Jack, but the Dodgers in general, when are we going to see the smart move of pitching around trying to get to a Jazz Chisholm or trying to get to a Verdugo or somebody like that instead of pitching to these big guys? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, Jack, main takeaway here is watch his command early on in the game. I think that'll tell you the story of how it's going to go for him. And both these teams, the, the first innings are vital in every baseball game, especially postseason. But uh, the Yankees have an 896 OPS during the first inning in regular season games. The Dodgers, 887. I believe that has them ranked second and third in Major League Baseball this year. So these first innings are going to be, I mean, must-watch television, obviously with all the stars we're listing. But... Um, to get off on these games. And yeah, I'm interested, you know, Jack's off speed stuff rated out incredible this year that I have to imagine, you know, when you're a starting pitcher, your goal is to get through a lineup three times that, you know, you're saving stuff. And, you know, this second time around, I'm going to show him this and whatever. I have to feel like you can't be doing that um, in these games. Like you can't say, Hey, I really want to get through this first inning, only throwing them, you know, the fat, like no chance, dude. Like, you, that is the most crucial inning of the game that I, I think you're going to see Jack Flaherty flipping up that slider and curveball a lot, um, especially early on. And I, I think the goalpost, especially for how strong that Dodgers A bullpen has been, coming into this game fresh with the off day on that third day, I think they're telling Jack, hey, t you get us two times through, you get us that four innings or that 4.1, and... That gives the edge to the Dodgers in, in game one, if he can get them that, um, which we've seen him do that this postseason, and we have seen him not. Let's round out the Dodgers, like, pitching options for these games, then we'll yeah. go over to the Yankees. So game one starter, Jack Flaherty. We just talked about him. Game two starter, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, yeah. who, you know, he's 
he's looked good in the postseason and he's gotten touched up in the postseason. It's kind of, you know, you can say that about a lot of these guys. So we'll have him starting game two. He's a traditional starter. He's going to try to give them five, six innings. I mean, that's what the goal is for him. Then after that, the decision becomes, are we going Walker Bueller um, or a bullpen game? Because the Dodgers will have to have a bullpen game in this series. And we mentioned before, it goes two, three, two. Uh, in between uh, those twos and the threes, there's off days. So that's where you have to look at, you know, when is this do- – when should they throw a bullpen game? Because it goes Friday, Saturday, off day Sunday, where you can replenish, you know, have some rest. Then it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off day Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So right now, I think the Dodgers are deciding – when they're going to throw that bullpen game, whether it's game three, whether it's game four, and that kind of puts them in an interesting position for me. Because if you throw a you know a bullpen game game four, like is your bullpen gonna be able to come back after throwing game three, possibly high leverage, then finding nine innings out of it game five uh game four, and then game five, what what are you going to have left? So this is going to be a challenge for Dave Roberts to piece together these innings. And that's kind of how teams have approached pitching this year. Then specifically in the postseason, it's, it's outs. It's how many, where are the outs and how, I know this seems rudimentary, but like you can only bank on Walker Bueller giving you so many outs. That's, that's just kind of like the bottom line. So you, you understand there's probably going to be four innings that you have to cover you're going to have to cover nine innings with your bullpen one game. And so it's going to be, hey, what can Walker give us? And then where do you go from there? I mean, we've had guys like Brent Honeywell kind of step up and give multiple innings um, in these bullpen games. And I think when that bullpen game does happen, you're going to see Dave Roberts have to decide what kind of bullpen game it's right. going to be. And by that, I mean, if they jump out to an early lead, then he'll, the bullpen game will be addressed as our high leverage guys are going to come in and we're going to use use them and try to win this game. If the Yankees jump out to an early lead on the Dodgers bullpen game, we might see them go for the more, more bolt guys, saving those quote unquote high leverage guys for the next game. So it's all going to have to play out. There's no like, script that's already written. I mean, Dave Roberts, Dave Roberts is going to have to be writing this on the fly. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest stories of this world series is I think specifically Dave Roberts using the bullpen, but I think you could say both sides, how they uh, you know approach the bullpen. For me, Yamamoto's the X factor. Um, I know that's kind of a lame sports term, but I, I like believe in it. Like Yamamoto was great this year, man. He, he got injured and he missed a chunk of time, but if you take out his first start, his uh, they started the season in uh, Korea with the, the Padres game in March 21st, so I'm okay throwing out his one-inning, five-earned run start. He was, so he had 18 starts. In 89 innings, he had 103 strikeouts and a 2.53 ERA. The FIP is in line. Like, Yamamoto was pretty much as advertised and in this postseason, and he's been building himself back up, um, he has been good. Af- after his first start uh, with San Diego, where they got punched in the mouth, that was the Fernando game. That was insane. Um, he had a five-inning and a do-or-die uh, game five. Five-inning shutout. Um, and then his last start against the Mets was 4.1, two earned runs, eight strikeouts. So he was... He was pretty locked in that if if they get those outings from him, I think Dave Roberts and the Dodgers will be able to manipulate their script well enough off of getting something from Jack and Walker. Because uh, there's going to be a game or two where they don't get something from Jack or Walker. Um, or they do have to do like the punt bullpen day and they figure out their script along the way. But if Yamamoto can be this guy... Um, I think that unlocks everything for the for the Dodgers in their bullpen. Where if he's not, like if if every day they're pulling up to the park in these games, wondering if they're going to get three from their starters, I do think that would be unsustainable for the series. While the Yankees are going to open up Garrett Cole, um, who you know if you're doing your best pitchers, best starting pitchers in baseball list, it's tough to ignore and. It was a scary start of the season for him. They thought he might need Tommy John. 
He doesn't. He misses the first half. Again, was kind of not spring training on the fly, but you're catching up to the train, and it feels like he's caught up. Um, you know, some of these Dodgers have good numbers, and Garrett Cole has some weird when he's not on regular rest type stuff. Like, he is... <laughs> We haven't been too silly this episode, Trev, because it's the World Series, but we normally do. Like, Garrett Cole is missionary. Like, he is, like, he has the perfect windup. He, he plays by the book. He, like, he is the starting pitcher built in a lab. Um, that, like, I don't know. I think sometimes that works against him. Like, What I, do you mean by missionary? Yeah. Um, that he, uh, turn around, baby. Um. <laughs> oh boy. Uh they also have Carlos Rodon who they paid a, a ton of money to. Like Clark Schmidt's going under the radar. He's put together a very nice season in regular season. Um that these Yankees do have a starting rotation that with exposing these bullpens, which has been one of the storylines of these playoffs, if they like if Cole and Rodon are on, that that is the biggest. That's the biggest advantage and potential separator in this series. That, that's yes. That's the gist of going over these starting pitching, starting pitching matchups. Is the Dodgers have? I'll get. I'll give them a full three. I was in like two and three quarters starting pitchers. I'll give them three. Let's just say they have three starting sure. pitchers. They're going to have to do a bullpen game. The Yankees, on the, on the other hand, will not. I mean, they have options right now. I, I believe the, the expected would be Cole, Rodon, Schmidt, and then a decision. But I think it might be Heel. Heel would so, get the start, and then you Heel get the start. So they have starting pitching. They have enough guys where then it flips back over to Cole and Rodon. So they have that, and the Dodgers don't. So that's definitely, right. I believe, an area of an advantage for the Yankees. This starting pitching and their ability, like you mentioned, to not have to go to their bullpen uh, on a full bullpen game, limiting the exposure, limiting the innings, keeping them fresh. I think that is something, yes, that right now the Yankees have the the advantage there. So I'd go bullpen Dodgers. I'd go starting pitching Yankees. And then it brings us to, well, we don't want to talk about base running. Yikes. If you're a Yankees fan, don't want to talk about base running. They're one of the most, worst base running teams I've ever seen. <laughs> ever seen. Uh, but it brings us to the lineups. Mm. Are those brought to us by anybody? Sure, they can be. They're brought to us by the DraftKings Sportsbook. Um, Obviously. Yeah. Uh, Trev gave you his little sprinkle before uh, the birthday boy on Friday night. Yes. Um, this is it for baseball, people. So the same game parlays, the odds boost, whatever you're looking to do, a $5 bet for new DraftKings customers will get you $200 in bonus bets when you use code TALKING. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code TALKING. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code TALKING only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, while Trev runs around, I, I can run through the Yankees quick. Um, you're going to see Glaber Torres at the top of the lineup. Uh, his story is, you know, top five prospect to failed shortstop to amazing hitter to not amazing uh, he's been amazing this postseason, especially in first innings. Uh, it's been unreal what he's doing, setting the table for Juan Soto, uh, the prodigious B-Day boy who's about to run into $600 million this offseason, if not seven. Aaron Judge, your larger-than-life MVP, home run record, AL home run record. Thank you. Um, and then things get interesting. Giancarlo Stanton has slid up the lineup. Uh, to protect Judge and get him extra at-bats because they're looking for another lefty to set up to balance the lineup. And whether that is Jazz Chisholm, who they traded for from the from the Marlins this year, uh, Austin Wells, who, you know, kind of rookie catching sensation for them. Uh, both of them have gone ice cold in the postseason. Anthony Rizzo playing through a broken hand has been great, but go check out some of his quotes. I what did he say? His hand was ballooning up after each game? Like, he's... Anthony Rizzo's in it. Uh, and, you know, baseball's not a sport that I think is known for their their dog, tough guys. He's on the list. Um, and that's what he's going through. Him and Freddie. Um, both on the second team first basemans. Um, Anthony Volpe. 
uh, the top prospect shortstop who uh, had struggled at the plate in his first two seasons. He has been locked in this postseason. He's looked great. And then former Dodger Alex Verdugo uh, in for his defense. He plays a solid left field, and he provides a contact bat at the bottom of the lineup. Sometimes those uh, ground balls go through. Sometimes they do not. Um, and that's what the Yankees are really rolling out there, man. Like, we'll see if 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 Rizzo's hand acts up. They've got some some options off the bench. But the Yankees, and it's a little different from the Dodgers, this is the lineup. Like, this is what you're going to get. Yeah, there's not a lot of, let's take advantage of this platoon situation. Boone says, let's go and get it. Here's my dogs. They had at one point... Jazz Chisholm hitting in front of John Carlos Stanton, I believe. Yes. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. They right? want to break up the righties. But I get you that. You can't, but... at this point, you're in too deep. That yeah, None of the lefties are going. You're not. You can't. Mm, yeah, the Dodgers, uh, they don't have any lefties. Right. <laughs> so, um, for the Dodgers, um, we're going to go with Shohei Otani mm. at the top of the okay. uh, the Dodgers line. It's pretty good. Uh, I think if you followed along, you know that he's had some pretty crazy splits in his numbers with nobody on. It, he's gotten like one hit or maybe two hits, but with runners on and runners in scoring position, he's been an absolute madman. Uh, Biebs, find those numbers for me as I go over the rest of these um, the Dodger lineups. After him will be Mookie Betts, who has been an absolute menace. Uh, throughout his career, but definitely in these playoffs as well. Freddie Freeman is going to be there in the three hole. Uh, he said he's a hundred percent playing. Uh, we'll see how the ankle affects him after him. I think, an, and you, you nailed this before the season, Jake, I think an unsung hero of the Dodgers season this year has been Teoscar Hernandez. And if he continues to, you know, do what he's done this season, I mean, that that's, that is a crazy top four hitters right there. That is a, uh, you, 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 Get on the mound as a starting pitcher, and you go, "What do I got to do?" And then right behind them is Max Muncy, who yeah. absolutely crushes the ball. If he gets on a heater, it's it's home runs, it's bat drops, it's working. I mean, I think that might be, you know, the 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 cherry on top because not only does Max Muncy can he pump you, but he's going to take his walks and work like good at bats and see pitches. And it's like, oh my gosh! After that. Kike Hernandez will either be it'll probably be in center field, uh, could be at shortstop. How are they going to do that with him and Tom Yebbin? I think he'll, he'll probably be in center field. Kike, he's had a great postseason. He turns into, you know, a stud when it comes to the postseason kind of uh, time. Gavin Lux at second base, he's dealing with some some stuff, but uh, looks like he's going to be ready to go. Will Smith has been one of the best offensive catchers in all of baseball. I mean, he's definitely an, has been an an offensive threat throughout his career. He'll be in the eight hole and Tommy Edmond, NLCS MVP, who was hitting cleanup for them in the game that they clinched uh, with four uh, runs driven in. He'll be in the nine hole to turn it back over uh, to Shohei. So the lineup is deep. It's strong. There's power, there's speed, there's versatility. Uh, this it's, it's, it hasn't stopped. This lineup hasn't stopped at all in the postseason. I don't expect them to stop in the world series. So, in my mind, I have this as a slugfest. I do not have this as a pitching World Series. I have this, who's going to hit the three-run homer? Who's going to have the bases loaded, uh, bases clearing double? Like th These are the big moments that are going to happen in my mind. It's not going to be, is Garrett Cole going to run and throw a one-hitter and a complete game shutout against this team? I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, the... The fear, the fear for me, and this is coming from the Yankees' perspective, Yankees fan perspective. Like you said, both these teams are going to take their walks. Like it's it's a pass the baton. Um, the Dodgers <laughs> can keep passing the baton. The Yankees, the second half of that lineup, can be good. Like I I've seen Jazz run hot and cold this year. He could be one of the best players in this series. He could be one of the worst players in this series. Um, Austin Wells has been uh, kind of a tough final month or so to the season for him. Verdugo's in there for defense. Uh, the two Anthonys. Anthony Rizzo playing with a broken hand. He's been great. Volpe, after having a, 
an underwhelming offensive season, has been amazing. His at-bats have felt awesome. Um, that I I am worried that dude, there's a couple times the Guardians should have pitched around Giancarlo a little more. They should have pitched around Judge a little, uh, Soto. Um, that if you line up those innings right, you can navigate the Yankees a little bit. That, you know, hey, you're putting action on the bases that if Jazz Chisholm or whoever has their moments, Rizzo, that you could get in a lot of trouble because you're putting ducks on the pond. Where I, I think these Dodgers, um, they will continue to pass and someone's going to run into something at some point. Um, whether it's Muncie, Tay Oscar, Tommy Edmond won the NLCS MVP. Dude, Kike Hernandez, not only has he been one of the best postseason hitters, uh, he has a lot of good numbers against some of these Yankees pitchers that I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. This guy, um, it, it's unreal. Uh, but that, I mean, it, it adds to and should add to his lore as a player um, that he is three for six with three homers off Rodon. Oh, I didn't know that. Hello. Uh, uh, he is seven for 19 with a homer and three doubles off of Garrett Cole, man. Like, Kike Hernandez is, is unreal and expect him to be a massive part of their postseason formula. Um, God, your guy Kevin Kiermeyer coming in late to games. Are we going to see that? Spin in the glove? I hope so. I, I can't wait. I would love to see that. Uh, some of the other good, I I'll, I want to run through just the numbers that are highlighted and stick out on the sheet. Uh, against Garrett Cole, uh, Tay Oscar with some tough numbers, 596 OPS. Kike with great numbers I just mentioned. Freddie, one dots off of him. Shohei Otani, 638 OPS. He has gotten a home run off of Cole. Mookie Betts, uh, 429, 6 for 14 against Garrett Cole. Rodon, Mookie Betts, one for 19 against okay. Carlos Rodon. So that's, you don't see that a lot. Chris Taylor, who has been one of these Dodgers, you, you need me today, Skip, uh, guys. Five for nine against Carlos Rodon. So expect to see him in that lineup. Uh, Freddie and Teoscar with tough, tough numbers versus Rodon. Uh, Kike with great numbers. And Shohei has one hit. It was a homer. Um Clark Schmidt has never pitched against L.A., but uh, a lot of the guys uh, don't have good numbers except Shohei with the homer. Uh, Luis Heal, if we get there in game four, Tay Oscar pumped him once. Uh, I think they have the same agent, my guy Rafa Nieves. Shout out. Okay. Uh, see him out. posting content on the gram. Um, on the other side, uh, for the starters, I was just there and I scrolled away. Uh, Jack Flaherty, Rizzo has good numbers. Nine for 21 with three homers. Again, that was a different... Anthony Rizzo, Rizzo hasn't homered since, like, June. <laughs> it, it very much looks like he's just trying to slap the ball around the yard. Um, we'll see if that changes come October. Sometimes the ghosts come out. Juan Soto, one for nine against Jack. Okay. Good for you, Flaherty. Um, Trent Grisham with good numbers. Don't know if he'll be on the roster. Uh, Yamamoto, the Yankees only saw him once, and they uh, they mowed him down pretty well. Um, Jazz Chisholm with good numbers against Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller has never faced the New York Yankees. That's going to be another. Obviously, all these games are circle and be electric, but Walker Bueller, the Moxie King from from this program's history, clearly <laughs> fighting with one arm behind his back at this point but trying to gut out his first start against the Yankees in the World Series, that's we're going to see he is going to leave everything out there. He might be making up pitches on the fly. Um, God, dude, there's so much good stuff in this series, bro. It's, it's going to be awesome, dude. I can't wait. <sighs> I can't wait for it. Walker Buehler standing on the mound in New York. Like, does he get to a different level with all the adrenaline? I feel like he's one of those guys that, like, feeds off that adrenaline. Um, man, I'm excited, dude. All starts Friday. What else do we got? Like, so basically we said, <clears throat> and I, I think we're in agreement here. We'll probably lean Dodgers bullpen. Yeah. We'll lean Yankees starters. I I, I think that's yep. not even a lean. We're going yep. Yankee starters. And then as far as lineup, I think we're leaning Dodgers. 
I think you got I to. I think so just for the depth. Um, like we're t- There's obviously massive threats in the Yankees lineup. Right. Like they can overcome anything. I think you lean the depth with the Dodgers. Um, then if you talk defense, if you talk base running, I think you also have to go with the Dodgers in, in, in both of those categories. Not to say that this is just a – Dodgers have the huge advantage. What is the what are the numbers, Beebs? What do you got on like the series odds? I, what, oh, before Vegas. Before Beaver says it, what do you think? I I looked this up yesterday. Oh, I, you did. I did, uh, I did some of this with uh, foolish. Is it close? Foolish Bailey on on Wake and Jake. Go check that out. It is. It, the Dodgers okay. are a slight favorite. It was minus one twenty five, while the Yankees were okay. plus one hundred five. So I mean, okay, in, same today. In Vegas terms, that is honestly like I think if home field advantage was different, Vegas may have those numbers flipped. Like that's that's how tight it is because um, the bullpens are both going to be there. Uh, the overexposure, you know, there's some good articles that came out. It's one something Jimmy's been on for years, and it's it's just common sense to a degree. But the more you see relievers, they're normally two pitch guys. These hitters are really good. The relievers also get fatigued throughout the series that the the math starts mathing that it's what the Dodgers need to be careful with. Dave Roberts was loud about it in the Mets series, trying to make sure his guys didn't see the same lanes with those game scripts. He was able to navigate that pretty well. Um, and the Yankees are in a similar boat and they're trying some unique stuff where uh, Luke Weaver, who's now closing, which that is, could be a 50-minute episode if we wanted to. He was a punching bag of a starting pitcher, one of, a bottom three starting pitcher. A lot of those innings were in the NL West, so a lot of these guys have great numbers against him. Throw those out the door because he yeah, has different. transformed into a different human being. Um, try, I think he threw his cutter at like a 20% clip during the season. He didn't throw one until the last batter of the Guardian series. So... I think the Yankees pitchers are trying to hide some of their stuff if their high leverage guys get overexposed. Uh, Clay Holmes will throw his sinker as much as he can until he needs that slider. Uh, The chess match of navigating in this new world of bullpens is going to be fun because some of I think Juan Soto has like two homers off Evan Phillips and four at bats, so like they're they're going to be careful with that matchup. it's the big one, man. It's the big one. I think we kind of covered it all. Um, is it time for like predictions? Do you want to end with that? Like, give it. I mean, I feel like I know who you're gonna say, right? But I, you know, we got to go that and games. And I'm curious. You know, it's all obviously a crapshoot, but let's 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 give it to the people, Jake. I mean, it's 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 a straight up fan vote. Like I at at this point, I have no pride. At this point, I have no pride, man. Like Are you this, a Yankees fan? Just say is, it. I I grew up my so my first AOL username was Sports Jake. Sick, <laughs> pretty pretty damn sick. <laughs> Good accurate. When it's accurate. A, when AIM came out, it was Jeet Goes Deep, which a lot of chat rooms thought was dirty at first. Uh, for whatever reason, I thought it flowed better than Jeter Goes Deep. There's a Jeter poster behind me. I've m- made a lifestyle out of being a Yankees fan. Like, I'm I'm going to pick Yanks in seven and hope uh, the ghosts and the gods Yanks kick in. in. Oof. Um, I, I don't know what I believe. I mean, these, I do think these teams are truly, like, on paper, very... Easily matched. Because as, as you were saying all those things, like Dodgers might play defense a little better. They definitely run the bases better. Their bullpen may be slightly better. I think they have more depth. The Yankees high end, they can ball out. Um, that starting pitching could be everything. Like we could walk away and yeah. say Yanks, Yanks in six because these starters couldn't give the Dodgers what they needed. Um, that I, I do think it's straight up, and I will quote my friend Derek Jeter, who said this on the post game show last time. He was talking about they were talking about players partying and celebrating, and they were like, you know, the championship series that's a tricky one, right? Because you know, now that you've made it to the World Series, that's the one, that's the celebration you want. Derek Jeter said, Joe Torre said, this is the one you celebrate the most because the World Series. It's se- this was the hard part. Getting here through the regular season in these playoff series, that was the hard part. The World Series, man, like, 
it is a little bit to the gods, and especially in this matchup, bro. So you have Dodgers in four. Now, obviously, I'm famous for never playing a playoff game, but I would feel like you'd probably celebrate the World Series one the most. Oh, you want that, but <laughs> <laughs> you want that for sure. Uh, it haunts me every single day, guys. Oh, no. Um, I- I've had a tough time handicapping these Dodgers. I, you know, during the Mets uh, series, I-, I felt like anything could have happened to them at any given time, but they just kept hitting and they just kept scoring runs in bunches. Um, if they continue to do that, I think they win this series. I think there is a relentless, a relentlessness to their offense. I think the Mets really felt that. I think the Padres, they got the pitching brunt of it, which was kind of strange. Um, and then the offense really opened up in that NLCS. I think I'm not trying to be contrarian here, and it's not just because I'm an L.A. guy. I think there's just a little bit too much of that in their lineup. I think Dave Roberts was pretty smart in how he handled his starters. Like he kind of let Walker eat it one game against the Padres. He kind of let Flaherty eat it one game against the Mets, saving his bullpen. I think, I think he's understanding that he's someone's in his ear explaining to him really how to manage this bullpen. He's done a really, really good job of it. I think if he can continue to do that and, I just don't think there's anyone to pitch around. It's very hard to pitch around this Dodgers lineup. So I I, I will go Dodgers. I would love for it to go seven, Jake. I would mm. love for it to go mm. seven. I'm going to go Dodgers and six. I uh I want to see which team gets tight first. Like we we mentioned the magnitude of this series. Which team feels it first? Does someone go down 2-0? Like the Yankees haven't been to the dance in a while. Like our... Are, are they are they going to feel it? The Dodgers, they think they're winning the World Series. They think they're about to verify 2020 in a way for some of these guys. Um, like, are, are they going to get tighter? Is that the beauty of these California managers, Dave Roberts and Aaron Boone, just chillers, bro? Um, and they've got some postseason history in them um, on the field and, and in post. So uh, my final notes are enjoy it. Um, whoever you are, enjoy the ride with us. We record after every game. We're doing a Talking Yanks after every game. We're doing a Talking Yanks version of this uh, coming up in a little bit. We're live on Talking Yanks during every game. We're going to be live streaming. If you haven't checked those out, they're pretty wild. We have a lot of fun. It was a weird concept for me at first because I was like, what? Like People just watch us watch the game, but our live chat is electric. Uh, you know Jimmy's going to have some breakdowns that are unreal. We make merch. Uh, it's it's the big final go for us. So if you guys are a part of that, we thank you in every way. Trev? Dodgers fans, a lot of times complaining about our lack of Dodger coverage. We don't got anybody. Yeah. So, hey, I mean, if you are a creator and you think you can do it for us, show us. Now would be a great time to highlight yourself. Show us. I'd love to have yeah. a Dodgers content creator. <laughs> us, too. Me, too. <laughs> me, too. So, hey, <laughs> put some content out there. We'll be watching. What I always say is, you know, I can't tell the Yankees, hey, I'm an electric center fielder. Hire me. No. I have to show them I'm good at it. You got to go out there. Yeah, you got to go out there and get it down on the field, Pop. Show me you can make the content. Thank you guys so much. Please subscribe, whatever. Oh, God, Trev. It's starting to get real. It's starting to get real. Chick sucks. I want to see you in agony. I'm sorry. Is that weird? At one point, you will. Like, is that weird? I want to see you like this in your chair. That's not weird. It's kinky. Kinky. You know I'm being right now. Stop saying that. How do you want to see me? <laughs> <laughs>